Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we've got a gun gripe for you. We're going to be talking about, actually, this is one of the, <laughs> the first gun gripes that we've ever done where we're going to compile a, a bunch of random crap that's been going on into one gripe. It's the ketchup gripe. The ketchup gripe. Well, the reason that this is a ketchup gripe, uh, a lot of you guys have been complaining to us and asking us, hey, when are we going to get more gun gripes? Uh, when are you guys going to put out more stuff? Well, here over the last two or three weeks, we haven't really been filming a lot because Chad and his wife had their third baby no sleep no sleep and, and my my son started kindergarten so that's been hell yep yeah so there's been some things that have transpired over the last <laughs> you know three or four weeks and things that are going on that unfortunately we haven't been able to touch on everything <laughs> wait a minute guys all this stuff's going on you guys aren't talking about it what's going on yeah, this no, everybody, everybody's giving us a hard time so <laughs> we're going to backtrack a little bit over the last uh, month and and talk about some things that have happened and try to kind of play catch up and just report on a few like random things that we've seen so this gun gripe is kind of a catch-up gun gripe and we're going to try to get kind of back up with the time so um, a lot of you guys been asking us to talk about the stuff happening in MA with the uh, Attorney General uh, Mara Healy uh, on July 19th. Of course, you know, it's this basically renewed interest in the already existing uh, weapons ban, assault weapons ban as they call it, Airports. and the ambiguity of the wording of the ban. And basically she's come out and said, hey, uh, you know, uh, the Attorney General basically is one of the highest, if not the highest, law enforcement uh, officials in a given government, let's just say in a state or whatever. So she basically is saying, oh, well, this has been misinterpreted mm -hmm. for the last 18 years. And of course, with a lot of uncertainty, not to mention ambiguity, she's going to just automatically go, oh, well, we, we basically want what the Californians have been shoved, have shoved down their throats. Basically sort of retroactively saying that something should be enforced one way when really the wording of the assault weapons ban that's currently in place is already pretty much set in stone and understood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been enforced this way for the last 18 years. It's like she's just wanting a different interpretation of the law. Right. Um, basically, she's, she alleges that the ban's definition of copy or duplicate assault weapons has been misinterpreted for the last 18 years and she is simply the first law enforcement off official to discover this incorrect interpretation. Oh, wow. The first one? So, unfortunately for Attorney General Healy, the history of Massachusetts ban on assault weapons makes perfectly clear exactly which types of firearms the legislature intended to ban. So, basically, the, the ban specified firearms that were not to be in, public, in the public's hands. So, what happens? Okay, well, there are workarounds. There are loopholes that are exploited in those type of bans, just like what happened in California. So now she's saying that, okay, well, all those copies of those guns, you know, the AR-15 was banned, but all these different copies, you guys can't have those either. But you can keep what you have, but, you know, nobody can be allowed to buy any new ARs. And she just basically announced this to all the gun shops and FFLs and everything else, and most of them just literally took the guns off their shelves. They're like, oh, crap, you know? Yeah, I mean, what do you do in that situation? So, it's uh, it's pretty random. Obviously, there's an agenda at play. I mean, we all can see that. The writing's on the wall. Um, you know, they're they're uh, they're fitting into an agenda, and mm -hmm. they're trying to further uh, an agenda. And part of that agenda involves the you know them taking firearms away from the you know law-abiding public. And you know, oh well, you can have what you've already got, but you just can't own any more. Well, I mean, what, what kind of sense does that make? So mm -hmm. if, if this law has been in effect for 18 years and there's been no increase in crime, there's been no decrease in crime, let's just say status quo or whatever the case may be is what it is. And it's not, let's just say there's not a negative effect on crime. There's mm -hmm. nothing really truly happening here. Then why kick a hornet's nest? Like why make mm -hmm. it a big deal? Why make a thing of it? Oh, well, because it fits an agenda, and part of their agenda is disarmament. Well, so. and, and she's basically just taking the law into her own hands and just kind of working it and saying, well, you know, we've just been re or interpreting this wrong for the past 18 years, so we're going to be interpreting it this way. So it hasn't uh, been a problem up till now, but now our, uh, now our agenda uh, makes it necessary yeah. for it to now be a problem, yeah. which is basically so, what she's saying. So here's an interesting little tidbit here. Um, this is, let's see, by 1998, the federal ban on assault weapons had already been in effect for nearly four years. That was the 1994 Clinton ban or crime bill, you know, that expired in 2004. Um, 
This it says, uh, manufacturers were producing the compliant rifles that Attorney General Healy is now targeting. Um, so Massachusetts, you know, you can't have bayonet lugs. You're, I don't think you're supposed to have like pistol grips or a few other laws and ends like classable stocks and all that kind of stuff. It basically mirrored the federal ban that we had in 94. Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts legislatures in 1998 were well aware of these compliant rifles, yet they chose not to alter their legislation to prohibit those rifles when they simply enacted a copy of the federal ban. So they enacted a copy of the federal ban on a state level that they could uh, just keep on the books and not let expire. So uh, it's hard to imagine a more clear-cut example of legislative intent. Uh, let's see. Yep. So they chose just to copy the ban. I mean, very simple. Yeah. So now all of a sudden it's a problem. Yeah. They make it a problem because it fits an agenda. So that's pretty scary. I mean, that happened back on July 19th. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, there's been a lot of people up in arms and a lot of people at this point, you know, we're here in like near the middle of August. Mm -hmm. So it's been almost a month since this stuff kind of started rolling out. And part of this video, we're also going to talk about uh, stuff going on in mm -hmm. California. Yeah. Yeah. We already did a video on that. But yeah. before we get to that, the oh, sorry, but the other interesting ahead. thing here. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So th this whole thing came around because of an enforcement notice, okay, that the attorney general put out in Massachusetts. And uh, the notice provides uh, the following test to determine if firearm is a copy or duplicate uh, assault weapon and therefore banned under the new um, uh, interpretation, if you will. So, a weapon is a copy or duplicate and therefore a prohibited assault weapon if it meets one or both of the following tests and is, number one, a semi-automatic rifle or handgun that was manufactured or subsequently configured with an ability to accept a detachable magazine or two, a semi-automatic shotgun. So basically, if it's semi-automatic. <laughs> yep. I mean, so, similarity test. A, te a weapon is a copy or duplicate if its internal functional components are substantially similar in construction and configuration to those those of an enumerated weapon. An enumerated weapon is one that is on the current uh, ban list. So, so basically all of them. <laughs> yep. So under this test, a weapon is a copy or, duplicate, uh, copy or duplicate, for example, if the operating system and firing mechanism of the weapon are based on or otherwise substantially similar to one of the banned weapons. They're ba that's basically a direct stab at Era 15. Yep. That, that's oh, all it is. Of course. And this one too, interchangeability test. A weapon is a copy or duplicate if it has a receiver that is the same or, or, or interchangeable with the receiver of an enumerated weapon. A receiver will be treated the same, uh, let's see, as the same or uh, interchangeable with the receiver on the enumerated weapon if it includes or accepts two or more operating components that are the same as or interchangeable with those of an enumerated weapon. And that ain't hard to do. <laughs> yep. Such operating components may include but are not limited to the trigger assembly, the bolt carrier or bolt carrier group, the charging handle, the extractor or extractor assembly, hmm. and the magazine port. Hmm, charging handle. <laughs> yeah, they're going directly after ARs. And that is basically just a stab against ARs. Yep. So these tests seem intended to give little in the way of actual notice to gun owners while giving the Attorney General's office unlimited flexibility in enforcing the ban. So Do the, as I say, not as I do. Yeah, so the sim similarity test, I mean, you, what are you going to do? You could just about say anything is is similar in, in yeah. different weapons platforms. I agree. I mean, oh, well, this pin fits in this gun. Oh, these trigger pins are the same as in this one. Oh, no, you can't have oh, that. Oh, a firing pin from an evil, deadly, non-banned gun will fit in a banned gun. Oh, man, that's one of those features. Boy, I mean, she started up the hornet's nest up Dude, there for that, sure. that is some bull crap there. So that's one thing we want to touch on is the MA ban. So, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully... You know, you guys will, will kind of glean a little information about that. Now, in terms of where it's going, what's being done, of course, there's a general feeling of, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the FFLs are going to obey the law. Of course, they, they wouldn't. Um, but I would say in terms of the individuals, obviously, people are pissed, and they should be. Uh, you know, any time that, that they're just going to blatantly strike a, a pin, stroke a pin, and just take your rights away. And well, that's it, the it's thing. That, crap. One thing I read is there's some there's some um, some lawsuits and whatnot that are kind of coming up to, to, to determine whether or not she had the ability to enforce that, you know, and kind of reinterpret the law that was already on the books, whether or not that's actually in her power. So there's there's some movements in Massachusetts to fight this. But you know, if you live in Massachusetts, you need to be contacting. You know, state legislature and everything, contact complain. the governor and complain, complain, complain. Complain you know? about it because it is a bunch of bull crap. All right, and there's another little story. This is very, very quick that we saw the other day. It, it didn't really merit, like, making its own gun gripe about it, but we thought it would be kind of fun to mention it. So, uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, <laughs> which is basically another one of those alphabet agencies, received a report uh, from someone. 
And apparently that report was substantiated enough in the claim to merit investigation. And that's where it ends. But the investigation involves a guy wearing a Don't Tread on Me, a Gadsden flag hat to work. And it offended one of his co-workers and they griped to uh, this alphabet agency. And now that that claim is substantiated enough to currently be under investigation. So basically, it got blown out of proportion, and there was a bunch of people saying, oh, well, uh, Obama's going to ban the Gaskin flag and all this stuff. Well, I mean, the, the EEOC, I think is what it is, the organization that oversees that kind of investigation, they're still looking into it, but the, 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 the basic thing was a black employee felt like a, a white employee's hat was racially offensive to him, and... You know, nothing was ever said. And they believed him. <laughs> the, 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 the story that I read was there were no words ever exchanged between these two individuals, but he just filed a complaint, and yeah. then it got escalated out of proportion. To the and, point where it at least is being investigated. But it's being investigated. Nothing invest will come of it, but it's just well, bull crap. <laughs> there, there's no racial ties to the flag. It's just his, base, his, his claim is based on the flag's creator being a slave owner. And, and that's it. It's just, it goes back to just simple things that people get so bent out of shape about yeah. that do not matter. Pe people get, get totally bent out of shape over just the trivial, politically correct crap. Well, don't tread on me. The, the gas and flag was a symbol of the American Revolution. It was, you know, don't tread on my rights, Britain. You know, we're not going to we're not gonna stand for this kind of crap. And yep. it still is a sign of, or a symbol of anti-tyranny. It is. You know I mean, so that's the simple thing. But it's just, we thought we'd mention that. If you guys yeah. hadn't heard about it, go look it up. It's, it's crazy. It's just more stupidity out there that will just make your brain hurt. We, you know? we felt that that was important to mention because it was just an example <coughs> of political correctness just taking wrong turns. I mean, Ugh. people just have to grow a spine, man. That's the thing. Grow a dang pair. You know, so that there's one of area of our gripe there is talking about the gas and flag. All right, another thing, um, I was watching uh, some stuff on Facebook and kind of thumbing mm -hmm. through um, a couple of things the other day, and uh, apparently we've been called out by Mr. Coley on the ore, and it's not a bad thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Calling out, I know that sounds bad. Certainly not Challenged. a bad thing, but he wanted to uh, challenge <clears throat> me, okay, to a little bit of something. And a lot of things he said in the video were awesome, and I think he's a great guy. And he represents firearms owners in a just awesome way. And I definitely want to say, you know, thanks to everything that he does for the Second Amendment and for the NRA and everything that we all have going on as gun owners. He is definitely an integral part of that. So I thought that it would be uh, worth merit uh, to mention um, well, what he talked about in his video. So basically one of the purposes of him making the video is he was going to call out, call out, I say, but, but basically kind of mention <coughs> five different people in his video um, to kind of call out about this thing that's going on with the NRA right now. So, uh, Rock Island Auction House, you guys are probably familiar with them. They do a whole bunch of just awesome stuff in terms of, you know, a lot of collectible firearms and everything like that. So, from the perspective of, uh, you know, getting really rare guns and stuff, they're an auction house that deals in like a high quality, uh, you know, antiques and high quality collectibles and really just any investment grade firearm and everything. They are actually matching NRA donations made through this program up to $1 million. Yep. And that's, they're matching like completely 100%. Dollar for dollar. Yep. So what I'm going to do, since I was called out from uh, Mr. Cole on the or, I'm going to make a $500 donation. So that means that my $500 donation that I make through this program, that Rock Island Auction is going to match my $500. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that he mentioned me in the Facebook post, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate 500 bucks to the NRA and then uh, Rock Island Auction is going to match me in that program. Uh, at the point this video is being made, um, they've raised about 50 grand, which is great. You know, uh, the NRA is definitely one of those groups of people that is a very important fighting arm for the Second Amendment advocate. So part of this idea, I have to call out or mention five other people. So I'm going to mention those five people now. We're going to call out Matt at Demolition Ranch. All right, to see if, if he can meet put the challenge. Put down your weed eater, Matt. Get your wall down, That's man. That's right. Put down, your, put down your chainsaw. Get over here. All right, we're going to call out 22 Plinkster. Great guy. Oh, yeah. Dave is such a great dude. Just reach up there on top of your fridge, Dave, and your change door. Yeah. I mean, you know you got it up there. It's next to your guns <laughs> and your cereal up yep. there, okay? All right, I'm calling out Suits Double O. You know, he's an excellent YouTube channel. I'm sure he's got some cash, you know, or some gold. He's probably, he can donate some gold. He's Maybe. probably got some gold stash. Maybe. All right, we're calling out TN Outdoors 9, Tommy up there in uh, Tennessee. Great guy. 
he does a ton of awesome uh, you know, ammo tests and everything. And he seems to be, as far as I know, the only person that can actually see Bigfoot on a regular basis. Yeah, I don't you, know how. You know, but. he could probably like catch Bigfoot and rob him and send some of that money in. All right, I'm sure and I'm calling out, well, I say calling out, but <clears throat> I'm calling out the guys over at Gunblast. Uh, you know, Jeff is a really, really awesome guy, and he's a person that over the years I've definitely looked up to as a as a person. And and what he does, you know, he, he seems like he's got a really good head on his shoulders. He's a very temperate guy, and uh, I, I really think highly of his channel and what he does with his online magazine, so we thought we'd give him a little shout-out. Uh, so there's, there's item number three in this gun gripe is uh, mentioning the... Uh, uh, Rock Island Auctions auction house, uh, you know, match that they're doing for the NRA. I thought that was really cool, yep. and I thought that was <clears> worth <throat> a mention. And to let people know, I'm going to donate now, some money there. This money goes directly into the ILA, which is the NRA's like legislative, you know, branch. Why not they lobby for gun rights? Now, a lot of people probably watching this video are probably thinking, well, you know, I don't really support the NRA because all they ever do is call me and they want more money and they want this and that and they want me to renew. And, you know, they, they were kind of responsible for the NFA and the Gun Control Act and the Hughes Amendment and all this and I've got a sour taste in my mouth. Well, guess what? You know, we all know about those things, okay? And nobody really likes them, but guess what? They are still the largest lobbying organization in this country for gun owners and gun rights. And if you don't support them, then, you know, the future may be something that you don't want to see. You know, the, I mean, the, there's the no telling. The thing is, you know, part of it too, and, and I get this comment a lot from people where they're talking about, you know, how people bash the NRA and everything <clears> like that. <throat> Guys, the NRA can't fight every single battle for you. I mean, they can't physically do it. There's just so much out there that sometimes at a grassroots level, uh, sometimes it can be hard to rally the troops. You know, it's, it's important on all of us. We all have to be activists. We all have to be so, activists. You can't just solely rely on the NRA. There's a lot of things be you know, behind the scenes that the NRA does to really support uh, you know, things we all have going on. But it really is up to guys like us even, like as a YouTube channel, when we do these gun gripes, it's important for us to rally the troops. Like, you know, open carry in Texas, we did the, the video on open carry and we, we brought about that, that interest in getting open carry passed in Texas. And, you know, due to the efforts of guys like myself and Military Arms Channel and, and you know, Tim's efforts and everything he's doing. Uh, you know, guys like us can make a difference. We can make a change. We can rally the troops and we can get ears to the ground where they need to be. So um, I would definitely, you know, urge all of you to, to continue that spirit, you know, to, you know, when we tune into Gun Gripes, we put something out. We're, we're doing it to try to help the entire uh, sphere of, of the Second Amendment community. It's, we're not saying all this for our own good. We're trying to put this stuff out there to raise awareness so people know when they're under attack. My, Pretty simple. One thing, too, real quick. You know, my, my thing is, I think about it all the time, you know, the NRA, okay, 5 million plus members strong. Well, mm -hmm. that's all fine and good and all, but, I mean, how many gun owners are in the country? 90 million? 120 million? I mean, come on, people. Yeah, you know, it's it, kind of it's kind of like saying the five percent you know, know speaks for everybody. Literally, I mean, think about you know if everybody in the country who owns a firearm would join the NRA. I mean, twenty five bucks a year. I mean, for an annual membership, and that helps go right into those type of funds. It's worth it. You know, I All mean, right. come on. All right, so moving on to the next thing. Uh, you know, we we did a, a gripe a couple of a couple of episodes back where we talked about the California gunmageddon and all of Governor Brown's bull crap and gun everything. Gun apocalypse. So the yeah. gunpocalypse, gunmageddon, whatever you want to say. So if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in everything that, that came down the pipeline for the unfortunate uh, serfs of California, uh, you might want to go check that video out. It goes into a pretty good bit of detail. We're not going to hash out every single thing, uh, but we do want to mention that you know recently there's been a bunch of great stuff going on. Like you know they had a rally up at the Capitol where they had about mm -hmm. 500 people attend to uh, show their their general disgust with all the recent laws and everything. And King Brown, you know, yeah, King, to Jerry. King Brown. I mean, think about it. Can can you yep. can you lead a country from behind a desk? I mean, a desk is a desk is a is a is a very very you know, sincere type of symbol, right? You know, what happens at a desk? You know, business happens at a desk. You, you sit on your phone, you, you sign paperwork, you, you meet with people, you drink your coffee, you read your paper, whatever. But a country <laughs> can't be ran from behind a desk. Mm. And a person that leads from behind a desk is not a leader. And Governor Brown is nowhere close to even being American, in my opinion. <laughs> and and that, that just ain't even, don't even get me started on that. I thought this was kind of funny. It says, uh, recently California Governor Jerry Brown signed into law seven anti-gun bills shortly after a special session nicknamed Gunmageddon by pro-gun groups 
and was utilized to fast track them to his desk. Uh, despite the governor receiving thousands of calls, faxes, emails, and letters urging him to veto the bills, he quickly signed six of them into law just one day before he left for vacation. So he now I'm gonna leave for vacation. <laughs> just let all this crap settle down, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll be I'll be in Tahiti if you need me, sipping yeah. on a margarita. And yeah, yeah needless Whatever. to say, it pissed a lot of gun owners off in California. You know, right. and oh my gosh. So we want a mission uh, proposition 63. Um, this is something that could be on the November ballot in uh, California. Uh, some of the information that I've got on has been a little bit cloudy, so do some research on your own, but I just want to make sure this is on everybody's radar. Uh, basically, what it deals with, and this is something that's going to be on the ballot, so this means that you guys are going to vote on it. It's not something they're just going to sign in ambiguously, which they might as well. Oh. It seemed like this was something that Jerry Brown was going to sign or whatever, but he did not, and it got pushed to the ballot. I think it's something that uh, the Lieutenant Governor uh, Newsom kind of cooked up or whatever the case right. was. But despite despite what whatever uh, you know whatever it may or may not be or however it came to be, it is here, and it's something to consider. It's so, much of crap, too. Uh, it includes background checks for ammunition and banning of large-capacity magazines, which, you know, of course, you know how you're going to vote on that. But just make sure that when you go to vote in November, if it's on the ballot, make sure you oppose that crap. You don't want any more coming through than, than has to. I mean, and well, as it stands, there are a bunch of advocacy groups and pro-Second Amendment groups in California that are fighting the good fight. They are fighting uh, this, this, this slew of, of filth of gun legislation that's been rammed down their throat. So there still is a fight going on. There are uh, donations that are set up out there to try to get funds into the hands of these people that can help, uh, you know, acquire, you know, legal uh, process or legal resources mm -hmm. to help fight this thing. Well, and and two, you know, measures that wind up on a ballot for the general public to vote on, are, it, it's just silly to me because most of the general public will look at this and they'll be like, okay, yeah, that sounds good, yeah. Yeah. And they don't even have a clue. So the yeah. biggest thing it's is feel good legislation. Yeah, is education, education, education. Making sure people know that this crap is just bad. It's like it's stupid. And, I mean, you're going to have to go and get background checked just like you would if you were filling out a 4473 for a firearm to oh, yeah. pick up a box of ammo to go to the range with, with your kid. We can uh, certainly kick a dead horse all we want, but we're preaching to the choir here. You guys know what's going on, but <sighs> we thought that was a worthwhile mention, and we wanted to commend the citizens of California for, you know, standing up and rallying at the, at the uh, not the courthouse, but rallying at the Capitol mm -hmm. and everything. So that's awesome. That's what it takes to really try to, you know, get things done and, and make sure they understand that you're totally not happy with what's going on. So between the stuff going on at MA and the things in California and a few of the other bullet points that we hit on here. There's one more that it, this is definitely a little bit more in the political realm, and that's why I saved it for last. Um, this stuff with Hillary Clinton and all these emails, man. You know, it, it's just so they released 44 more emails uh, that were, you know, she purposely deleted a bunch of content off of her private email server. So basically, Clinton. 30,000 emails. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so Clinton and a couple of her aides basically were running this this crooked campaign essentially of of corruption and greed and money and all no telling what other amount of nefarious activities basically out of the Clintons well, basement the the most of a private email server yeah the, the most recent thing if you guys haven't been following the whole Clinton email scandal and all you've been living under a rock you need to go and read some articles on it but you know the the, the skinny of it is WikiLeaks got a hold of all these deleted emails and they've been read releasing them. them you know read and them. It's just still amazing, amazing to me that this woman is so above the law that she got away with. I mean, right now, I mean, she she really needs to be in jail for perjury because she lied about several things involving this case and these new emails that came out. There's information in there that the Clinton Foundation took money from foreign governments and government entities in exchange for political favoritism. In exchange for political favoritism by the State Department, but also future favoritism as president so as a in a clinton presidency a new clinton presidency so that i mean dude that's that, shady that's just about treason if you ask me yeah. and several other people and i'm sure that uh you know gowdy isn't gonna be happy with that either you know well here's the thing too so why why is this important why 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 complain about Hillary? Well, Hillary is a very anti-gun person and for for me you know i i know that a lot of people you know look at a bunch of different sides of the coin and i do too you know believe me I'm a fair enough person that I have tried to see the merits of Hillary Clinton. I've tried. But for the life of me and the person that I am, I'm an American. 
You know, I'm a gun owner. I'm an honest person. You know, I'm a patriot. I love my country. And my, my principles and my values and the person that, and what I hold dear and the kind of person that I am and the fact that I hold my countrymen dear, I just can't find anything positive to say. I and, mean, and from my perspective, I, believe me, I've tried to, to, to try to see some merit in her in some way, shape, or form. She's not a dumb woman, but that's not really all there is to it, though. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you can't just, I mean, well, Obama's smart, but Obama does a lot of things that people don't like. Well, but. speaking about dumb, I mean, uh, you know, the other option is <laughs> looking worse and worse every day, I have to say. I mean, yeah. I, I'm going be honest with you, I'm not happy with really either candidate. You know, it, I mean, Hillary and Trump are the uh, the best thing this country can produce. I mean, that's, I, I'm sorry, but that's pretty sad, yeah. you know. But, you know, being a gun owner, I mean, you know, you have to vote one way or the other. The reason I, I mention mean, it, and the reason I think it's important to talk about in this gun gripe is, you know, I am a one-issue gun voter, yep. or a voter, and I, I'm going to vote towards the most pro-gun candidate, regardless of, of who those people may be. Now, there's always going to be that argument out there. Oh well, you're going to select the lesser of two evils, or yeah. you're going to vote one part. You're going to vote based on the party, regardless of how big of a piece of crap the person may or may not be. You know, one thing that I can respect about Donald Trump is the fact that he's he's brave. You know, he's willing to say what's on his mind. He's not scared to say what needs to be said. He's not scared to put the issues right out there for people to, to just digest and see. And he's not afraid to lay out a possible solution mm -hmm. uh, and everything. And, and you know, it, it takes courage to say what's on your mind. Sometimes a little bit of uh, bash, you know, stupidity. But <laughs> yeah, a little bit here and there. Some of the yeah. stuff he said, I'm like, he did not just say that. Yeah. But, but you know, <laughs> the thing is, you know, he's independently wealthy. He is. He is he's not taken, you know, handouts and campaign money from all these, you know, interest groups that, uh, I mean, think about it. Eventually, those interest groups can have to be rescinded somehow. Well, he's raised a lot of money, but he's also used some money out of his oh, own God, personal yeah. accounts, too, yeah. which, which I, I mean, I commend. But, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, you can't vote for Hillary. You can't vote for Trump. Well, vote third party. Well, guess what? I mean, our... our party system is broken. You vote for a third party, then you're just, in my opinion, you're almost you're just throwing, throwing away your vote, your vote away. You're throwing your vote away. Uh, so, I didn't really uh, want this video to turn like uh, political per se, but we thought we would mention Hillary's emails because the level of cor corruption, I mean, it's just so crappy that, you know, she is above the law and seemingly above the law. I mean, if you're some GS-10 or GS-12 that works in the White House and you think for one second that you slip up and you let the wrong amount of information get out and it, it comes to pass that you were not only responsible for it, but then Try tried to, to conceal the fact that you let that information become available, do you not think that you would, one, be fired, two, or, or in jail, or three, worse? Yep. I mean, so... Can you really expect somebody to lead your country who will hide behind the guise of being above the law? Do you really want somebody like that running your country? I mean, think about it. A true leader would accept responsibility for their actions and would suffer those consequences, whatever they may be. And I think it speaks volume about a person's character, or I should say lack of character, when they're going to blatantly lie right through their teeth. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Lying makes you old quick. Yep. And you're gonna. You, the more gray hairs you have popping out, and the younger you are, when you're in a, when you are a professional liar and you lie for a living, it shows. It shows on your face. It it, it becomes ingrained in like your soul and your very being. You know. And anybody that's smart enough and uh, observant enough, they can see the lie right on you. They can see the lie because you're wearing it everywhere you go. So the fact that that woman is a walking lie. I mean, if you tell one lie, you have to, t t to tell 50 to hide the one lie, and it just, it just gains well, on itself. My you know? thing is just all the, all the corruption that's coming out in the Hillary campaign, and, and just the, the Hillary group in general, you know, and like the, the crap of the DNC and her emails. And, and oh, not with, to mention Benghazi well, and just all that bull crap. I, I'm thinking more about like just how the, how the DNC and everything was aligned to put Bernie Sanders out way ahead of time. And all these emails and stuff came out about that, and she's just totally ignoring that th those claims and just saying, oh, no, I didn't do any of that. But th the proof is right there. Yeah. I mean, there, there are people that they, they resign from their post because of this kind of crap. 
Hillary Clinton needs to resign her candidacy. I mean, if she you does. ask me. But I mean, uh, yeah, re resigning is kind of like a, a polite and gentlemanly way to say, "Oh, I screwed up." Yep. And instead of you raking me over the coals, I'm just going to walk away and give up whatever I've gotten out of this situation. <sighs> if she had any drop of red American blood in her, she'd walk away right now. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I mean, Hillary Clinton does not need to be our next president. No. Not only from a gun owner standpoint, just from an American, honor. a pro-American standpoint. She lacks standpoint. honor. And she's, she has no courage. Mm. She's not an honorable person. And we could go I, on I days and days I can't on get this. behind that, you know. So we wanted to really just kind of put together a bunch of these things in this gun gripe. I know we kind of touched on a bunch of different things, some of them political, some of them involving legislation, some of them involving, you know, other little things. But some of these things weren't really enough to, like, just dedicate a gun gripe to. And I know that you guys are busy and have a lot going on. There's probably guys that are riding in their truck right now on the way to work, and they're listening to our redneck butts over their uh, stereo and their, and their truck or whatever. So, um, you know, I know that some people kind of treat this like a podcast. They're not really watching us per se, but they're listening to us. And uh, really we not appreciate a whole lot to see. It. Yeah, not you know. much to see. But, uh, you know, we appreciate the, the time that you guys uh, give us when you, you know, listen to what we have to say. And I know sometimes a lot of this... Uh, you know, sky is falling, chicken little complex about every little thing going on can get old after a while. And believe me, I wish that we didn't have to make these types of videos. I just wish that people would treat others fairly and that we could just be treated equally, just like any other American, and be given the same rights. I mean, why is the Second Amendment the only one that's treated like this little bastard child that gets put in the corner and spanked every day? I mean... If they would just treat the Second Amendment like every other right we have, we wouldn't have to make these videos. No, they but trample the Second Amendment is the only one that gets constantly trampled and treated with a, we'll punish you now and then sort out the business later type of attitude. So that's a big problem with this country. And, you know, Second Amendment, some people may not really care about firearms ownership as much. I mean, but for me, firearms ownership is a cornerstone dare I say, way of protecting every other right you have. And if, if you have someone that doesn't support uh, the Second Amendment, then they're not supporting your way to protect your family, the way to protect your country, and the way to protect your other rights, the way to solidify the existence of the rest of the rights that you well, have. Well, not only that, but also to protect the unarmed populace because, you know, when something bad does happen... They call the, a guy with a gun. Exactly. The unarmed, you know, call the armed, whether it be in the form of a, of a neighbor who's pro-gun that they might have some beef with or whatever or don't like very much, or it be it be the cops that come showing up with guns or whatever sure. the case is. I mean, well, let us know what you think. Uh, go in the comment section below. Leave all your comments and suggestions. I mean, is there some area that we left out, or is there some bit of detail that you think we should have hit on that we didn't, or do you have a grossly different opinion to ours? We want to know. I don't care if it's negative, positive. Let us know in the comment section below. We'll read all the comments. Um, sometimes a lot of these gun gripes, we tend to rehash them down the road. Uh, sometimes opinions change. Sometimes different facts come mm. out. Uh, obviously, if something, like for instance, if something happens with this Hillary email scandal thing and, and there's an updated uh, bit of information, chances are we'll probably do another gun gripe and follow up on it. But um, thank you for watching today's video. We appreciate your time. I know everybody's busy. I know that we all live busy lives, and I know this is a lot of time to ask of you guys. But I appreciate you listen to, uh, listening to our gripe in here. Uh, we have a lot more videos on the way, more um, torture tests, uh, more... Uh, you know, random meltdown videos where we're ruining machine guns, you know, shooting them till they fail. Um, yeah, we've got, you know, more gun gripes on the way, like I mentioned. We've got firearms facts, gunsmithing videos, reloading. Um, in terms of guns, we're pretty much, if it's gun related, we've probably got some amount of content out there that has to do with it. So we're very, like, wide ranging channel in terms of what we do. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. It's hard to find people that want us to, or that uh, want us to ruin their guns. Yeah, it you is. Know? They don't but like that very we, much. We tend to kind of pull it out of them, though. So <laughs> any, anyway, uh, guys, thank you for watching and listening. We'll catch you next time. See you. See you later.